Ladies and gentlemen, I have a quick update about the boost controller, essentially. It is working good, and what does this say, 4 PSI? I'm gonna have to check this, that's what I'm going to do next, is actually check, because it's adjustable with an Allen key under this rubber plug. Yes, this simple boost controller does run the entire time you have the boost controller turned on. But a quick remedy to that is something I think Dale wants to update on the higher end units or in the other unit. But one way to remedy that is this is a little hob switch. And I'm just going to put this on the ground or the power wire coming out of the boost controller. So you can have the display on and it's sending the pulse width command. But it's not running the solenoid until I'm going to probably set. I'd love to set this for one or two pounds because I think this can do one to ten. I got it off eBay, we're going to see how it does, but if I put this on and I run the ground wire through, it completes the circuit automatically on boost. So it only runs the solenoid when you're making boost, thus increasing the life of the solenoid quite a bit. So I'm going to try to find a barb for this and pressurize it and see when it clicks and then see if I can adjust it and then I'll cut wires off of this guy and put these guys on it. Okay, so it was extremely hard to hold all this in place. I did not get it on video, but I used my low resolution regulator and this guy and a multimeter on the continuity beep test mode. And I was able to get this down to a pound on one PSI. So that's nice. So like the minute a little bit of pressure starts building, it's gonna kick the boost controller on because my lowest setting is only like 4.3 PSI or you know, just right around five. So. This will work great. And what I would like to do is the same thing. I don't know, that's not big enough. That's the water cooling thing. But there's one more plug on the back. Here, I can take the plug out and this is eighth inch, this is eighth inch, and this is eighth inch. So I'm gonna daisy chain the block again and put this guy down here. And put everything on the lower diaphragm ports on the wastegate and then connect the, uh, cut the line here and connect it in with a little, uh, hoop connectors that's what they are so be right, right. back I'll show you that. and it's completed again i don't have anything loomed obviously still testing everything that's what we say to ourselves when we don't loom things but there's the pressure switch so one pound it lets this guy get control so you can have the boost controller set and it won't beat up the solenoid and it'll kick on and a lot of people are like isn't this too much heat well I've had these guys in engine bays where it's pretty disgustingly hot for a long time and they work fine. So I figured I would do this because it would be simplest and cleanest and a lot of people might understand how this works better with how simple this is instead of like lines over here, solenoid over here, vacuum lines over here. People seem to get confused but it's, it's literally that simple. You're just adding pressure and pushing back down. You're dynamically increasing spring pressure you're adding to the dome and this is just a giant vacuum block on the bottoms this is the water line but vacuum block vacuum block vacuum block so we'll continue to test this out and we'll see how long it lasts and i like it real simple like this so i'm going to keep it like this as long as i can and i plan on beating this thing up another thing i would probably like to do is i'll probably hook up my second fuel pump like i'll hook up a relay I'll add another relay over there for fuel pump number two, and I'll run the ground wire for the relay through this too. So at one pound, it'll turn my boost controller on and my second pump on. So that's what I plan to do.